Hey guys, this is Scotty with Trek Pro City. Uh, today we are checking out how to set up a spin bike at home. So in this case, we've got the Cyclops Phantom spin bike. Uh, this is the one we use in the loft in our spin studio upstairs. First thing first, to get your pedals on. Um, definitely, ha you know, you need a pedal wrench, you need to tighten these on so that they're on properly uh, and they should match the shoes. So in this case, I've got a road Shimano system going on, uh, which gives you the kind of the best power transfer, um, but you can use SPD style pedals with regular, the smaller cleats as well. Um, it's really important to have a clip-in system because then every time you get on the bike, you're going to be in the same position for your knees and your, uh, and your feet and just kind of aligns everything properly. Also, you can do better drills like single leg drills and really use the entire pedal stroke. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. So, you know, you get this new spin bike in your house and you're like, okay, what do I do? Uh, most of them come with a pretty generic seat. In this case, we've got a pretty nice Bontrager seat on there, um, which I much prefer than any of the generic ones. It's got a cutaway in the center. Um, it supports my sit bones properly because it's the correct width for me. I, at our shop, we can measure your sit bones and determine the right width saddle for you. So you might want to consider a new saddle on your spin bike. The generic ones they come with are not always great, um, but they do all have a, a standard rail. So you can go and buy any cycling saddle and they will fit most spin bikes. We need to get our saddle height correct. So if you have a nice road bike or a bike that fits you really well already, you can measure from the center of the crank to the top of the saddle, that distance there from your current bike, bring it over to your spin bike and measure the same distance and adjust your height accordingly. Um, in this case, I know my seat height and I've measured it out. We've got numbers on our seat post here, so I know I'm a number 15. So that's kind of, I mean, I know based on years of experience, but you can also, if you don't have a bike and you don't know your fit, when I am positioned on this bike, you can see my leg has a slight bend, uh, probably a 25 to 30 degree bend. We're actually measuring from our uh, hip bone right there into uh, bone right about there to our ankle bone right there. So those three, we're looking around a 30% or 30 degree bend. Um, there are technical terms for these. I'm sorry, I have forgotten them. <laughs> uh, and that's at the bottom of the pedal stroke. We're not measuring up here or here. It's at the bottom of our pedal stroke. You know, also notice my heel's not dropped. My heel is at a fairly level position. It's not super high, it's sort of neutral. Um, and my knee's not way out. It's kind of aligned above the pedal. So again, looking for a slight bend there. You shouldn't be dropping your hip to get that bend. Your hips should be pretty level left and right. Um, and you can see I've got a slight bend in my knee. If my seat is too low, I can develop pain in my knee, either below or above, or if, same if it's too high. If you're reaching and every time you come through your pedal stroke, you're really low and you have to rock your hip, it's really gonna cause discomfort in the long term. So saddle height, is very important. Um, there's another determining factor with saddle height and that's our fore aft. So that's how forward and back our seat is. So if you're too far forward, you might find that you're always sitting on the back of the seat and maybe falling off the back of the seat. Your saddle height is actually shorter or the distance there is shorter when your saddle's further forward. So if you're changing this fore and aft, you should also be changing the up and down of your seat height to accommodate for that. If we go further back, we're, there's a further distance, so we're gonna need to lower this a little bit. In theory, if you're sitting on your bike and you're spinning pretty quickly, you wanna be sitting on your sit bones on the back of the saddle, and so you can move the saddle to compensate for that, so that you're not sitting on the nose and you're not falling off the back of the saddle. Again, through lots of experience, I know that I, I really like it around a number four there. Um, and once you've got these numbers and you get it all dialed, you don't have to do this again. That's the science behind saddle height uh, in a very simple form. The front end of the bike is very personal. Um, I would highly recommend if you're looking to 
to really gain fitness and performance out of the, your bike and you have a, a nice road bike, to set it up similar to your road bike. So what I mean by that is if you've got uh, a drop from your saddle, like in this case, I've got about two finger drop, but on my road bike, I probably run actually more like a fist full of drop. So I'm gonna drop this handlebar a little bit lower. Um, also, the distance from the nose of the saddle to the center of the bar and to the hoods, you can measure that from your bike at home and achieve that with the fore and aft of the handlebar. Um, so getting those things all set up is really important the front end really it's kind of up to you I mean if you're really just recreationally using this bike at home and you're not looking for like the highest level of performance You can always just bring it nice and upright nice and comfortable great for watching TV uh, And hanging out, but if you're really looking to get serious on this spin bike and Train and perform then definitely setting it up like your road bike uh, is the way to go Thanks for watching and uh, check out our demo videos up here.